بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الأمين أما بعد. One of the great fitnas that's spreading now in the Muslim world is a fitna called what they call themselves Qur'aniyun. People who only say we only believe in the Qur'an, which is a, uh, you know, which, which is in itself uh, a contradiction in itself, uh, as I will show you. Uh, but we only believe in the Qur'an, we don't uh, believe in the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reason, primary reason for this is the misunderstanding of Islam from the very beginning. And sometimes, and all of these Qur'aniyuns, one Qur'aniyun to another, none of them they agree with one another. None of them agree with one another on really what their stance is. They don't agree on how to pray. And this is exactly the problem. That if I give you a book of mathematics and I tell you, okay, here's a book of mathematics or here's a book of computer science or any book of instruction, Unless you don't have, you can't become a carpenter when there's instruction and guidance in particular. You can't become that carpenter or that roofer or that plumb without somebody actually teaching you. The instruction books are just not enough. That's just a fact. And how do you know your interpretation's correct versus somebody else's interpretation? You know, and I'm going to come to this in a second, but let me actually show you. The word hadith in the Quran for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then I'll make a few more points. Allah subhanahu wa taala in Surah Tahrim says, "Wa id asarra nabiyu." And when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told some secrets ila baadi azwajhi to some of his wives hadithan, he told them a hadith. He gave them a hadith. فَلَمَّا نَبَأَتْ بِهِ And then when he told her of that. Now Allah could have used many words. Allah could have used the word قَوْل which means to say something. Kalam, which also means to say something. Hadith is the word used in Qur'an for Qur'an. For example, in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيُ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِحَاذَا الْحَدِيثِ يَا O oh, Prophet, you'll perhaps kill yourself. They don't believe in this hadith, meaning this Quran. And the word used in Quran is hadith. Are you in bewilderment regarding this hadith, meaning this Quran we have sent down? So Allah could have used so many words to mean that the Prophet told his wives a statement, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to use the word hadith. وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْدِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَأَتْ بِهِ When uh, she, okay, نَبَأَتْ When she disclosed this uh, secret, the Prophet told her, وَأَذْحَرُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ And the Prophet then manifested the truth to what? To the Prophet. Now notice here, that statement that Allah told the Prophet that your wife gave this secret away, that's not part of Qur'an. That's something other than Qur'an. What is that? So are there conversations, so it should be clear, are there conversations Allah has with the Prophet that the Prophet has with Allah or with Jibra'il that are not part of Qur'an? That are not part of Quran, and many parts of the Quran prove this. There are statements. Allah says about when the Prophet went to Miraj. Allah said to his servant what he said. He revealed to his servant. He inspired his servant what he. Allah has conversations with his prophets that are not part of Quran. Once you accept this point, then you understand. Okay, Allah told the Prophet. The Prophet told what to his wife? A hadith to his wife. Then Allah told the Prophet. That is something that is not part of Quran. That look, your wife, and Allah is saying here, I told the Prophet, فَلَمَّا uh, عَلَيْهِ And Allah made it apparent to the Prophet. He told the Prophet that she gave away your secret. أَعْرَضَ بَعْدَهُ وَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْدَ and when the Prophet mentioned to his wife, he only mentioned part of what Allah revealed to him, not the whole of it. Okay. 
to uh, to uh, to not hurt her feelings too much. He only told her a part of what Allah told her. فَلَمَّ نَبَّأَهَا And when the Prophet told her, look, you told my secret away, بِهِ أَوِتْ قَالَتْ She said, مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا So now the Prophet said, you did such and such, I told you a secret, you gave it away. And he told her a part of whatever that was. And she says, who told you this? And the hadith of the Prophet, the statement of the Prophet then is recorded by Allah in response. And now Allah is disclosing this whole information because of this event. قَالَ نَبَّأَنِي الْعَلِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ told me the one who is Al-Alim, the one who knows everything and Khabir, who has real-time information of everything. He is the one who told me. So, number one, the Prophet has conversations with Allah that are not part of Qur'an. The Prophet has, and the saying of the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned in Qur'an as hadith, which is the same word used in Qur'an for Qur'an. And nothing in Qur'an is by mistake. So now let's come to uh, another narr uh, another verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Duha, "Fa'amma as for the ni'mas of Allah, the revelation is the biggest ni'ma given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah." Okay, and "Fa'amma bi ni'mati Rabbika" as for the ni'mas of Allah, Right? And some of that revelation that the Prophet gets is put in the form of Qur'an. And some of that revelation is not put in the form of Qur'an. فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ As for the ni'mas of your Rabb. Okay? فَحَدِّثْ Mention them. O Prophet, mention them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mention the favors of Allah. It's not enough to have a book of instruction without some teacher, without someone who's actually going to tell you how to do it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make, that's why you have science, the theory of physics, and then you have applied science. This is how the real world works. And to tell me that we have only a book of instructions, which we have to then figure out ourselves without an actual model, is very, very problematic. But there's another problem. There's another problem, and that problem is that if the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ have no authority, no basis whatsoever, then why does the whole Qur'an then tell us what was said to the other Prophets, what the other Prophets said to his people, what the other, other nations they said to the Prophets, and the conversations between Allah's Messenger and his people, not the revelation. Not revelation, but the conversations that were taking place between the people and the Prophet of Allah. Okay, so they are sometimes, the Qur'an is clear, they are coming to the Prophet and they're saying something. And then he's saying, the Prophet is saying, Allah says this, and other times the Prophet is just saying it from himself. There are many, many conversations. The conversation between Yaqub and Yusuf, the two Prophets. Allah is quoting them. Allah is quoting the command He gave to His son as a prophet. Don't tell this dream to your son, to your other brothers. The conversation between Ibrahim and Namrud that bring the son from the other side. If you claim to be God, bring the life to the dead. Why is Allah recording that? If the if the sayings of the prophet have no authority, why is the whole of Quran, every single prophet, his conversations with his community, Prophet Lut in kuntum fa'ilin. These are my daughters. If you're going to do something instead of the men, the statements of the prophets are recorded over and over and over again in the Quran. But yet the conversation of the prophet and his people is not important. But the conversation of the Prophet and his people are recorded throughout the whole of Qur'an for every single Prophet. But the last Prophet, he should leave us a manual on how to do everything without giving us a role model. Without giving us how this is actually applied. Without the applied sciences of what is the instructions in the Book of Allah. And there are simply things you can't understand without the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, the explanation Allah says in the Qur'an, for example, وَإِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاقْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Anyone who knows Arabic will know this. Allah said, when you stand up for prayers, wash your faces. Now, what it literally means, وَإِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When you stand up for your faces, prayers, wash your faces. Meaning you have to stand up for prayers first, do your prayers first, and then wash your faces. 
When the Quran has already been read, literal meaning, then say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, rather than from the beginning. Do wudu in the other one. Do wudu, start wudu after you finished your prayer, rather than do wudu and then pray. That's the literal meaning. How do you know it's not literal and it's in the way that the Muslims have always been doing? And there's so many examples I can give on this. Okay, so now uh, let's look at another verse of the Quran uh, other than, O Prophet, mention. Why is the Prophet being asked to say anything if his, revel if his words hold no importance? وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَزُبْرِ That فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلِ الذِّكْرِ Ask the people of dhikr إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know this is in Sutil Nahal بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَزُبْرِ With clear proofs and the scriptures and then Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ We have sent down this dhikr to you, O Prophet. Why did Allah send the Qur'an to a man, to a human being, to a Nabi, to Rasulullah? لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ So he will clarify to them what has been sent down to them. What has been sent down for them. Who makes the clarification? لِتُبَيِّن to make it clear, he makes it clear this has been revealed. And even if you if you, if you look at it at a very basic level, at its very, very basic level, how do you know how to even recite this Qur'an? How do you know that after Fatiha you have to say Amin? How do you know how to say Alif Lam Mim? How do you know which parts should be longer in the Qur'an, which parts should be not as long in the Qur'an? How to do recitation, where to do the recitation from? How do you know any of this without hadith literature, without the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, without the scholarship of Islam? You want to throw all that away. You're the only ones right, even though none of you agree with one another. You're all right, but you don't agree with one another. And you come with fanciful ideas that let's throw away with all the applied sciences, only this leave this one book. And even though this book is telling the Prophet to make clarifications, the Prophet is being told, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدْ Mention the ni'mas of Allah upon you. Not what has been revealed to you. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ As for the ni'mas of your Rabb upon you, فَحَدِّثْ And the Prophet has revelation other than the Qur'an coming to him and he tells his wife because Allah told him, hey, you mentioned a hadith of mine to someone else, a secret of mine to someone else. And when she said, who told you this? Then Allah sent down this, that this was not respectful to the Prophet. And then Allah even records the Prophet's reply to her. Khabir told me the one who knows it all and knows it all. Okay, He knows it all, he has knowledge of everything and he has real life information as things are happening for everything. So those people who deny hadith, they have absolutely no legs to stand upon. They are liars, they are liars. They don't understand the Qur'an. They are, they are lying to themselves and they're lying to their community and lying to the people and making them go astray. Without the sayings of the Prophet, you can't go to extremes. We don't take the hadith of the Prophet like Qur'an. No, we don't. But you can't deny that they have an authority. They have an authority because the Qur'an tells us every single Prophet said things to his prophet, their people, and Allah recorded those things of their people because those statements of the prophet have authority. They have authority. And you can't deny the fact that things are recorded in history. We don't question if Homer wrote the book Homer or if Socrates or Plato or any of these ancient writers. We don't question them. But for Hadith literature, because you don't like it, you want to question it. And this is... You know, just you, it's 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 the uh, it's the it's the contradiction in thought. It's the contradiction in thought. And so, what when you say only Quran, what it allows the people to do is just to say, "I'll give it the interpretation I like according to the critique I see that I don't like in Islam." 
That's what it basically comes down to. Why you want to get rid of the Hadith literature? Not because of any intellectual endeavor. It's an emotional response to not being knowing how to deal with issues of Islam and not being able to deal with your emotional problems, your own emotional problems. And then your response to the world is, well, I'm not going to accept Hadith because I don't like them, because I don't like Islam. And anyone who denies the sayings of the Prophet as an authority and as a source of Islam is not, is not, is not Muslim. Is not Muslim. You wouldn't even be able to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah to become Muslim. You wouldn't even accept then to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah is the way to become Muslim. So, from the perspective of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, somebody who doesn't think this is even necessary to become Muslim, to take the Shahada, for example, because the Quran doesn't say you have to take Shahada to become Muslim. And so the person who doesn't take shahada to become Muslim and the person who doesn't accept the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and when the Quran says Qul in kuntum Allah, say if you love Allah, if you really love Allah and you love the Quran, what? If you love Allah means if you love the Quran, that's one of its meanings because your reverence to the Quran is your reverence to Allah. Qul in kuntum Allah. If you really love Allah, فتبعوني, then follow me. يحببكم Allah. Allah will then love you. But how are you going to... Ittaba'a means to actually literally physically follow someone. Like somebody's giving you instructions. Okay. So how are you going to follow the Prophet if you don't take him seriously? You want to just remove him from your part of an understanding of history. So these people, they are liars. They are liars and they're misguided. And I can't put it anymore. And I challenge anyone to... Find a problem with what I said to counter what I said. Go ahead, make a video against what I said if you think I'm wrong. Show me your proofs.